and this leaf starts to decay from the apex of the leaf so the custom was to remove the apex of the leaf and the petiole because these both decay first then the leaf is turned upside down and on the back side of the leaf they smear with calcium chunna lime so on the back side of the leaf some small small insects might lay their eggs and these eggs could be harmful to us so if we smear the back side of this leaf with calcium all those small insects and eggs they are all removed so that is why this habit came and then it is mixed with betel nut and uh, a cherry gulkandu and then it is rolled in and it is taken in and the first saliva that comes out is spitted out and the second saliva is taken in so as a mastigatory the beneficial effects of this betel leaf is very good but later stage because of various reasons this habit has been discontinued today the fast food culture has introduced many food items that are not friendly to our stomach and that they lead to many digestive problems so these problems could be easily solved by the safe betel leaf so this example is a clear example of analysis a complex thing how to make it simpler and how to understand the beneficial effects of betel leaf next slide please next one is detection i can give an example of old rice and yeast we have a culture where we use the old rice today afternoon if somebody is cooking the cooked rice is kept overnight soaked in water and next day morning that rice is consumed as a very healthy breakfast so if you apply this rule of deduction that is to seek to identify complex truth from the simple ones number 1 this old rice is tasty number 2 this old rice is a coolant to our body number 3 because this cooked rice has been soaked in water overnight there is growth of yeast and this yeast assimilates the good components in rice and keeps us healthy and number 4 the starch in this rice when it is soaked overnight is converted into resistant starch thereby it prevents the increase in our glycemic index so all this benefits of old rice is available and in the just past it was lost and now currently it is gaining its position back if you go to a place called coimbatore in tamil nadu a very popular breakfast is this old rice so in many cities it is picking up and this is detection in the next slide we will see about verification if we go to any south indian home you can see alum lemon chillies thorn turmeric and coconut tied in a thread and hung in the main door they say this is to ward off evil spirit but if you verify so what is verification to check what was discovered from reason 
was found through the previously established rules you will find that this is nothing but a first aid box in those days the greenery was more people were into cultivation and they are out into a forest and when they come in there could be a cut so for that the first aid is alam the first one you see no in tamil we call it as padigaram so this alam is dipped in water and it is just rubbed over the cut and this has astringent activity so it precipitates the protein which forms a protective layer over the wound and the wound heals in case if there is an allergic reaction the lemon will be helpful in case if there is a poisonous insect bite the oleo resin from the chili will be helpful in case if there is an infection so the turmeric which is having excellent antibacterial antiviral and anti fungal properties will be helpful in case if the person is having hypoglycemia the coconut will be helpful and the shelf life of all this is very good so this was in fact a first aid box if somebody rolls over a thorn so there was a thorn available you can remove that thorn so this is a first aid box and now this culture has been lost and in most houses today we don't have a first aid box so having a natural first aid box that has been verified for their usefulness is far better than rather than having not having a first aid box next slide i can give you example of rationalism in everyday life when we are solving a mathematical problem then we use rationalism we know that there is a day and there is a night why do we have a day and night it is because of the rotational motion of the earth on its own axis so this is rational thinking we know that the formation of hurricane is due to a natural method of the earth to balance its temperature which occurs in certain areas of the planet and not in others and we also know that tides are produced by the gravitational force exerted by the moon on the earth so knowing all this is possible only by rationalism next slide please i want to give an example of pharmacognostical rationalism we can take the relationship of sincona bark and samuel hanuman as a live example of this pharmacognostical rationalism and drug discovery we all know about sincona bark the wonder drug for malaria we all know the sources sincona calisaya ledgeriana officinale saxirubra on this slide next slide please you can see the photograph of christian frederick samuel hanuman next slide please hanuman knew a number of languages and because of that he worked as a translator and a teacher of languages he graduated with a medical degree from the university of erlangen and after graduation as a doctor he took a position of a village doctor in a copper mining area he was dissatisfied with the state of medicine in his time and particularly objected to the practices such as bloodletting that was very popular in his period he claimed that the medicine that he had been taught to practice sometimes 
did the patient more harm than good next slide please because of this he abandoned the medical practice and went back to his original work as a translator of scientific and medical textbooks when he was translating william cullen's book a treatise on materia medica hanimen encountered the claim that cinchona the bark of the peruvian tree was effective in treating malaria at that time in modern medicine they did not have any cure or drug for managing malaria william cullen says that mana malaria can be effectively treated by cinchona bark because of its astringent activity samuel hanimen immediately tested various other astringents for their effect on malaria and he believed that the other astringent substances did not have effect on malaria there is also one more version which says that samuel hanimen went to a felicitation function where the jesuit priest were felicitated and this jesuit priest informed samuel hanimen that the tribals in south america they are making use of the bark of cinchona for treating malaria but they kept it as a secret and gave it only to the tribal king and his family so the jesuit priest got this information from the tribals and started treating the people of south america who are suffering from malaria with the bark of cinchona and found it to be effective so hanimen received this cinchona bark from the jesuit priest this is one version and he started testing the effect of cinchona bark on his own human body by self application he started eating the bark and after consuming that bark he noted that the cinchona bark induced malaria like symptoms in himself and he concluded that this would be so in any healthy individual so he was a healthy man he took cinchona bark and developed the symptoms of malaria he thought if a malarial patient takes this bark he is cured so this postulated that like cures like so he came out with the principle that which can produce a set of symptoms in a healthy individual can treat a sick individual who is manifesting a similar set of symptoms this principle is called as like cures like and it became the basis for the approach to medicine which he gave the name as homeopathy in the last covid 19 also this homeopathy had come out with arsenic album for management of covid 19 next slide please then samuel hanimen started following the viennese physician anton von stock hanimen tested toxic substances on volunteers and he agreed that the toxic effect of ingested substances are often broadly parallel to certain disease states from this he successfully started treating people suffering from cough with ipica quanha and people suffering from scarlet fever with belladonna if you take raw ipica quanha many people will get cough so he thought people who are suffering from cough to them if i give dilute ipica quanha they would be cured and it happened so next slide please in english 
there is a very beautiful word that is called discover something is covered you remove that cover and that is called discover in nature many things are covered you will have to remove that cover and that is called as discover you search you will find something you search again you will find something better so searching again and again is called research so both this discover and research the fundamentals of drug discovery and research on drugs they are all based on this pharmacognostical rationalism next slide please here on the photograph you are seeing a person he is called gatta fosse next slide please gatta fosse was a french perfumist he studied chemical engineering from the university of lyon and essential oils next slide gatta fosse met the lavender oil producers from a region called haute the farmers of lavender they were working in poor condition and seeing the condition he was committed to develop french lavender during this process he learned about the medicinal virtues of lavender next slide please Nineteen ten, July twenty fifth, is a very important day. On this day, when he was transferring some essential oil in front of a naked flame, there was an explosion, and both his head and hands were burnt. Here, there is one more version. that when his hands were burnt there was a vessel full of lavender oil and he dipped his hand into the lavender oil and there were no burns or there were no scar of burns so this is one version the other one version was he had burns on his hand and face and he treated these burns with a dressing and uh, because of the dressing available in those times the wounds started giving a gangrenous odor then he remembered that the lavender growers had told him that the burns could be healed with lavender essential oil so he removed the old dressing and then he started applying lavender oil next slide please so he took off the bandages and coated his skin with lavender oil the results were great two days later his fever ceased his infection disappeared and his wounds healed relatively quicker without any trace so he has been literally saved from a potentially fatal case of gangrene and because of this personal experience he came out with the hypothesis that lavender essential oil has wonderful antiseptic and healing properties and from that onwards he started doing lot of experiments in hospitals first a military hospital and a civilian hospital and then he found out that this aromatic oils they have therapeutic benefits and because of this he introduced a system of medicine called aroma therapy and he is called as the father of aroma therapy next slide please
in 1915 he had a second episode his brother got an infectious disease during the war and then he died so for saving his brother he developed an antiseptic from aromatic essential oils called salvol and this salvol was a boon to the people to the spanish people who were hit by spanish flu in 1918 next slide please catafose did not want to turn the salvol formula into a commercial product believing that it was a public asset to be used for the common good because it was the lavender cultivators who gave him the information that lavender has very good activity in wound healing especially in case of burns so he made the manufacturing process of salvol available to all those who asked it in 1918 in a similar infection he lost his second brother again he tried to save him with the help of essential oils next slide please so with the success of salvol getefose started using salvol as a disinfectant and it became very popular in hospitals in factories in barracks in schools in cinemas in railway stations and the like and thus we have even today the successful application of aroma therapy next slide please so we have seen two examples one example of samuel hanuman the other example of getafase in both these examples we are able to see the success of pharmacognostical rationalism in india we have number of medicinal plants in india in every house we have a treasure knowledge on medicinal plants we call it as kitchen pharmacy we call we call it as home remedy so we need to document all this kitchen pharmacy and home remedy and for that the government of india has come out with a beautiful website called traditional knowledge digital library so with this we can upload the traditional knowledge that is available in public domain in our family and so that we can prevent it from getting patented and being used for our community in this context i would like to quote a third person padmashri palpu pushpangadan so this padmashri palpu pushpangadan he was the director of indira gandhi institute of tropical medicine and he went with his students on a educational tour to agastya hills his students were taking the help of tribals for carrying their luggage the tribals while climbing the hill did not feel tired but the students and the palpu kushpanga then they felt tired so the student asked the tribals why they are so healthy the tribal said they are consuming the fruits of one plant called trichopus zeylanicus and that is helping them to maintain their stamina so the students consumed the fruits and they had first hand experience and that formulation became a roaring success and all the money that he generated from that formulation he gave it back to the tribals in the form of uh, insurance schemes for the tribals in the form of amenities for the tribals and the tribals were very happy so this gesture of palpu pushpangadan of commercializing 
the traditional knowledge from the tribals patenting them and sharing the revenue generated with the tribals was appreciated by world health organization and world trade organizations and both this world health organization and world trade organization have declared to this world that this model of palpu pushpangadan is a role model to be followed throughout the world so here palpu pushpangadan had used this pharmacognostical rationalism in thinking and that is why he was able to commercialize the plant trichopus zylanicus the tribals were using only the fruits but he did research on leaves and proved that the leaves have excellent adaptogenic and anti stress activity equal or better than ginseng and he had commercialized it he had patented it he had generated lot of revenue he had shared it with the tribals and he had uplifted the life of the tribals and for that the government of india has recognized him with padma shri next slide please so my dear friends in the last one hour we have seen the effect of rational thinking with the help of three examples one example of samuel hanuman the second example of gatafase and the third example of dr pushpangadan so i request you to take home a message that henceforth in all the research that you do in all the projects that you do please apply this rationalistic thinking and benefit from the knowledge of our forefathers the our knowledge the knowledge of our forefathers have been given from generation to generation in the form of home remedies in the form of kitchen pharmacy and these when they are used for one generation then it becomes a country medicine and when it is successfully used as a country medicine for one generation it gets itself converted into a formulation and is accepted into a system of medicine and we have ayurveda as a system of medicine siddha as a system of medicine where more than 6 lakh formulations have been documented for various health related conditions for prophylaxis for management for cure for treatment for everything we have beautiful formulations in our indian system of medicine now as pharmacist we have to apply the pharmacognostical rationalistic thinking in standardizing the raw materials in coming out with standards for in process quality control and standards for the finished product so this is the need of the hour so i humbly request all the 100 participants who are taking part in this beautiful national webinar to consider the examples of pushpangadan samuel hanuman and getafose and come out with beautiful medicine discover beautiful medicine for the benefit of mankind and this benefit should be aimed at cure not at just managing so i once again thank you all for this wonderful opportunity of sharing my experience with you i thank the organizers for their beautiful arrangement and my session is now open for questions i request all of you to please questions to please post questions and i will be happy to discuss with you thank you thank you one and all i request the participants to post your questions <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.
I am very happy that my elder brother, Dr. Gopalan, has also joined this uh, webinar. Welcome, Anna. Srishti. I request all the participants to. I welcome Dr. Sinni Appan, who has joined. Anna, uh, you can please pose your question. You are on mute. Please unmute. Uh, Organize. Uh, yeah. You no. hey. Are you able to hear? No? Yeah, you are audible, Anna. So it was an excellent uh, talk. Uh, so many things uh, we don't know. Uh, just like uh, Indian uh, herbs, uh, there are Chinese herbs. In China, China also, uh, there are so many. Now we have started using ginseng. Ginseng and all is a very common medicine in uh, the ingredient for our, uh, uh, in all the health uh, tablets. So I just want to know whether uh, this has been studied in detail in India, uh, Chinese uh, 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 herbal drugs. Thank you very much, Anna. This for his beautiful question. The Chinese system of medicine is uh, very well evolved. In fact, they are far ahead of us. They have documented all their traditional systems of medicine and they have standardized them and they are faithfully following them. Uh, we are uh, far lagging behind them. And especially in case of ginseng, Korea has a monopoly on ginseng. From Korea, we can't bring even a small piece of ginseng out. So they are so possessive about their ginseng. This ginseng has been much, uh, what you call, worked upon. It has been overexploited. And uh, so instead of uh, their uh, medicine, we have a lot of medicine in India that are equivalent or even better than our, uh, uh, what you call, better than their adaptogens and anti-stress drugs. And uh, light from Ashwagandha to this Aroge Pachai, there are a number of medicines which can be used as adaptogen and anti-stress drugs. And uh, they are now uh, being uh, brought to limelight because of this research. Thank you very much, Anna, for your interest in this seminar. Thank you. Excellent. So we have a question from a student by name Chandrasekhar, sir. Yeah, please. Yes. There is there any rationalism mechanism also for novel herbal formulation development like phytosomes? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, there is some disturbance. I'm not able to get. Can I have the question once again? Yes, sir. Is there any rationalism mechanism also for, mechanism also for novel herbal formulations development like phytosomes? Oh, very good. Uh, uh, I'm very much thankful to this uh, student for his interest in this webinar. Uh, congratulations on asking this beautiful question. You are speaking about modernization. So in modernization, phytosomes, they improve the efficacy of a herbal medicine. So in that also, rationalistic thinking has been applied and it is in practice and followed as a best practice. But the point I wanted to drive among the participants is that in our Ayurveda, in our Siddha, we already have formulations. Each and every formulation has around 40 to 50 ingredients. And these ingredients are selected in such a way that a few of them have the therapeutic benefits, other mitigate the side effects, other ingredients bring down the adverse reactions. Some of them act as bioavailability enhancers. Some of them improve the stability of, of the formulation. So it is high time we understand the importance of these ingredients. And most of these formulations are make your own medicine type formulations. So the stability studies, the packaging studies, the labeling studies for these formulations have not been done. So it is high time that we pharmacists, we should take up this part of work and we should bring up our traditional formulations because they have been time tested. 
for more than 90 years they are in the community they have been used by our people for various disease conditions and our people our community have been benefited by their therapeutic effect so uh, now bringing this formulation at par with modern medicine and proving its quality standards at the time the manufacturers of this formulation was giving this medicine for free there was no profit motto now everything is for profit when there is profit ethics will go away when there is no ethics we cannot establish quality and for establishing quality our forefathers have not done much research because at the time there was ethics there was no need for introducing quality concerns in raw materials because the concept that somebody will adulterate somebody will substitute was not there now adulteration is there substitution is there so we need our pharmacy people to work on these areas to bring in quality and for that we need rationalistic thinking if there are 40 ingredients how to separate them how to identify them how to estimate them how to have benchmarks so these and all are the areas we will have to concentrate i once again thank uh, the student for his beautiful question see modern formulations like phytoso or british or australian to come and do research on our indian system of medicine formulations as indians we will have to carry out research on our indian systems of medicine and for that we have to apply this rationalistic thinking so we cannot take an indian formulation that has a holistic approach and test it for analgesic activity alone if you test it it will fail so you'll have to have a rationalistic thinking in testing our indian formulations that is what i wanted to make it up thank you very much for this nice question we have another question from sirisha yeah please so she is asking for a clarification that how beetle get infected by the sand meanwhile the coconut will uh, coconut tree will die hello Uh, it is not audible there is some disturbance in voice can i uh, can i have the question back once again yes sir. once more sirisha she wants a clarification on how the beetle will infect uh, get infected by the sand uh, i know so this beetle ah uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay ah uh, yeah so this beetle has a habit of shaking its head like this when it is consuming the shoot of coconut tree so they take fine sand and they fill the shoots of coconut tree with this fine sand and this beetle will be going down and down the shoot to eat the entire shoot so when it is traveling upside down am i audible when it is yes, traveling sir, upside audible, down uh, when it is traveling upside down the coconut shoot to eat it the fine sand will go in between the head and the trunk into the neck and every time when it is shaking its head like this the fine sand will infect the soft neck portion there will be cut and there will be infection and this infection is so severe at this region that it doesn't heal and slowly the beetle will die Uh, so it is the rationalistic thinking of the coconut tree climber he was able to identify the soft spot of the neck in between the head and the thorax of the beetle uh, so that observation power so that place is so soft but it is in in the crevice so the eating pattern of the beetle by shaking the head like this so every time when it eats the sand will just cut and create cuts in the neck which will get infected and the beetle dies and in practice the coconut tree climbers have seen that once they fill the shoot of the coconut tree with this fine sand the beetles die and the infection is not there thank you for this nice question the coconut tree will not die okay. srisha you have had asked a beautiful question you can go into the website there is one indian uh, institute of management iam uh, ahmedabad they have a beautiful group called srishti 
in that srishti there is a journal called honey bee in that honey bee they have taken a case study of only this uh, uh, eliminating coconut uh, rhinoceros beetle with the help of fine sand the coconut tree will not die because on the shoot when you put sand the tree shoot will start growing the uh, nothing will happen to the coconut tree you can harvest the coconut you can drink the tender coconut at the same time you will be beautifully physically eliminating the rhinoceros beetle thank you thank you sir so now i request shweta racha to uh, post your question you can unmute yourself and you can post your question hello good afternoon sir good afternoon the same that uh, actually i got a same doubt how the beetle uh, got infected means uh, by the sand same doubt so i got clarification thank you sir. thank you thank you thank you thank you for your interest okay. so this is rationalistic thinking thank you for applying it god bless you okay thank you. thank you sir we have another question from a student yeah Please. so how can we differentiate traditional knowledge along with the patents okay uh, i will can give you one example for uh, uh, 3000 years we have document that we have been using turmeric as an antimicrobial Uh, so women in south india they apply turmeric over their face and turmeric ha has been applied over the hands as a uh, what you call wound healer turmeric is having antifungal antibacterial antiviral activity and two indians went abroad and patented turmeric for america against india and for 6 months we didn't know that our patent was Uh, our turmeric was patented by america the turmeric was patented for systemic and topical applications so we have to fight in the international court we had dr marshall kar who was the then director of csir he had taken it up and we have to spend lot of money and time to fight and get back the patent of turmeric similarly many pepper many mango many have been patented so to avoid that the government of india has come out with a beautiful project that is called traditional knowledge digital library it is called tkdl so you can uh, google you can find it you can go into that library and whatever knowledge you have on traditional medicine you can upload it in your name so once it is uploaded in traditional knowledge digital library it becomes a knowledge available for the general public it becomes a knowledge in public domain and hence it cannot be patented so uh, the uh, the facilities research facilities available abroad are far far superior than the facilities available here so when we come out with a medicine that has been time tested the scientist abroad can do research and prove faster faster than us they can get a patent to avoid that to save our medicinal plants we have this traditional knowledge digital library so our traditional knowledge should be patented only by us and we should not allow others to patent it and for that we have lot of schemes like for example we have geographical indications in madurai we have one uh, jasmine madurai malli so that has a geographical indication we have in tirunelveli one alva so uh, that, uh, that is a geographical uh, indication and now uh, near dindukal we have one brinjal that has received a geographical indication so once a geographical indication or uh, 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 information has been documented in traditional knowledge digital library it cannot be patented so our information will be with us it will be available for public domain thank you sir we have another question from mohammed so he is asking yeah. what is the scope of rationalistic marine pharmacognosy research beautiful beautiful question so you have started thinking congratulations see uh, in those days 
to induce pregnancy they used to make use of marine algae uh, even today if somebody wants a mild laxative they are making use of agar so in many families in south india if suddenly if we have a guest they will just take agar they will put it in water boil it add sugar add milk add elachi and then take it as a sweet so uh, uh, especially for cuts and burns the shark liver oil cod liver oil they have been used as a wound healer so even the scars go away for vitamin d for vitamin a they have been using cod liver oil and similarly for uh, uh, indebility and that if somebody is very weak uh, for him shark liver oil has been a very good medicine so marine pharmacognosy it is endless lot of medicines are there the future uh, for the whole world to get uh, to reap to discover to do research on new drugs is from the uh, from the marine so thank you we have another question from sri ram yeah how a plantain tree helps as first aid as for poison effects or venomous effects plantain tree uh, in tamil we call it as vaalai maram uh, musa paradisica so the pith is edible you can eat it we call it as vaalai thandu so in our house they cut the plantain pith they get lot of fibers and from that fiber they make wick for the lamp also and this plantain pith uh, has lot of insoluble fibers so it is very much useful for cleaning our digestive tract and it has lot of minerals so it is a edible compound so from the plantain pith if you squeeze it you will get a fresh juice and that juice has been proved to have excellent wound healing activity so it is antibacterial and uh, so it is having antimicrobial activity it heals the wound so the plantain tree uh, they when they place it in front of a house and when they are cooking and they, while they are cooking for a large number of people uh, there could be an occupational hazard they could have a cut or there could be a burn so they need a first aid so at that time the first aid that was available was a plantain tree pith so they used to just cut the plantain tree take the pith take the juice out of it and apply it on the wound and then tie the wound with the plantain leaf so this was how it was used in those days as a first aid box thank you sir another question sir yeah how we will customize the availability of marine crude drug plants uh, uh it, it's not clear Uh, uh, once more please louder how yes. will you how we will customize how we will customize uh, the availability uh, of marine uh, crude drug plants how will you customize the availability of marine drug crude plants yeah in marine there is nothing called cultivation it's very in a rudiment form we have to collect it from the wild and the taxonomical identity of the marine organisms or plants collected uh, again it is a very difficult uh, position and there is lot of biological variation in the same species there is lot of variation so all these are the challenges for drugs from the marine so uh, still lot of research has to be done and uh, here we have one place called anamala university and uh, there in one place called parangi petai they have an institute for marine biology so there they are doing lot of work similarly in mandapam they are doing lot of work it's all only in publication stage it is yet to commercialize it is a real challenge uh, to identify and to establish quality especially from marine drugs because Uh, we have now started polluting the marine uh, so even on the sea bed we get microplastics so uh, this will affect uh, the flora and fauna available in the marine region so it's a real challenge thank you for the question thank you sir thank you so much for your explanation re regarding the marine farm because i am uh, i am planning to do my research in marine farm very good all the best speaker we cannot
if possible can you share your contact details and email id ma'am can share to the audience audience later or no problem and then we okay. can communicate uh, my name discussion. is professor gopal uh, my contact details are available with the organizers if any one of you want it you can just take it you can email me uh, g o p a l small letters veni v e n i veni <coughs> is my mother's name v for victory e for education n for nation i for india gopal veni at yahoo.com so this is my email id and my mobile number is 9898482221322213222 so this is my mobile number you can whatsapp me up if i am in a meeting i will not be able to answer you otherwise it i will be happy to always discuss with you thank you thank you sir <clears throat> now i request uh, nagababu to post your question unmute yourself and you can ask the question Uma Chandur, you can please unmute yourself and you can post your question, ma'am. Next participant, uh, Srinivas, you can uh, ask your question. Unmute yourself and you can ask the question. one me so has asked with what are the conventional drugs in pharmacognosy so uh, conventional take, drugs uh, in pharmacognosy yes sir yeah uh, so uh, see in drugs and cosmetics act uh, they have approved the official textbooks of the siddha system of medicine and from ayurveda in each and every book if you take the number of herbal drugs that has been mentioned is enormous so all of them can be considered as official drugs as per drugs and cosmetics act apart from that if you take our old pharmacopias 1966 pharmacopias lot of herbal drugs were there and then 1985 the number reduced and then uh, 1996 the number reduced so if you take our old pharmacopias we have a lot of documentation of medicinal plants so all these are our traditional conventional medicine that has been documented so we need to do research on them thank you uh thank you sir thank you so much for your uh, valuable time valuable session thank you now i request miss uh, miss maunika assistant professor from department of pharmacognosy to propose vote of thanks over to you monica ma'am yeah a very good afternoon to all i am monica assistant professor from department of pharmacognosy take immense pleasure to deliver a vote of thanks for the session discovery uh, firstly i would like to uh, thank our director and national president ipa dr tv narayana sir for supporting the staff to organize this kind of sessions and i, I would also extend my sincere thanks to our principal uh, dr g simlata ma'am for encouraging supporting and guiding us to choose the resource persons and i also thank our secretary dr t bharat vikas sir and other management members and i also extend my special thanks to today's speaker dr v gopal sir for the outstanding information and the ways to choose in the pharmacognosy thank you so much sir for accepting our request and enlighten our students and i extend my sincere thanks to all the participants students staff of act, staff of your active participation i thank all the teaching and non teaching staff of fips for your support to organize this session thank you one and all <laughs> thank you so much uh, so please kindly fill in the feedback form which has been sent in the chat box to receive your uh, participation certificates thank you everyone thank you sir this is from mishwan paranda id john kiruban right 
from the id john uh, kirubanai yes sir actually Kirubanai. this has been uh, joined with the id of john kirubakaran yes sir. okay 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 thank you yes, ma'am thank you so much we will feel now yeah mohammed uh, <laughs> if you have any queries you can directly mail at uh, webswebinar2000@gmail.com thank you thank you so yes, much sir thank you for your valuable time you, and uh, valuable uh, information to all the students thank you sir thank you